This program is proudly brought to you by Kersney College. The 2015 edition of the Kersney Easter Rugby Festival once more brought together 12 of South Africa's top rugby playing schools for a feast of festival rugby showcasing some of the country's leading young talent, all gathered at the picturesque Boerters Hill setting of Kersney College. Yeah, the festival is in its eighth year now and uh, it's shown phenomenal growth and uh, that's wonderful to see because we try and create a, a family atmosphere here at uh, Kersney for the weekend. Uh, you get um, families uh, with little toddlers, teenagers, everyone finds something to do here and, and enjoys the day. The festival kicked off with a welcome function in the school hall the evening before the first day of games. Invited guests and the various teams gathered to hear Kersney's headmaster Elwyn van den Aardbeg and sponsor Standard Bank's Toem Zemele, giving the lads some words of encouragement for the weekend ahead. A highlight, as always, is the opportunity to hear from some of the professional players, the Cell Sea Sharks. This year, it was the turn of Kersney Old Boy and England Rugby World Cup winner Matt Stevens. Flanker Marcel Kutsir and fly off Lionel Cronier, with Matt encouraging his alma mater's current first 15 to end the evening with a rendition of the school war. <laughs> Day one and an ideal autumn morning with the crowds looking forward to the first clash. The hosts Kersney up against Selborne College. The hosts got off to a flying start with flanker Tristan Dixon powering through Selborne's defensive lines and then passing on to hooker Joshua van Furen who went over for the first try of the festival. Selborne were quick to reply with winger Tristan Kutzer rounding the defence at great pace to score near the uprights. Some great play that pleased his coach. Look, we came with a, it's a mixture of experience and youth. So um, I think the way they've gelled together as a team, that would be our biggest thing in the way. Obviously we've played the type of rugby we wanted to play. Yeah. So that's a great positive for us. By the second half of this opening game, Selborne had surged ahead on points thanks to nifty tries like this one from fullback Michael Boerter and it contributed to a 48-7 opening victory for the visitors. Sachs, who were debutants at this year's festival and South Africa's oldest school, playing their opening game against another established South African rugby school, King Williamstown's Dale College. We are, we are the oldest um, school in South Africa, which we um, which we're very proud of, but um, we just like to uh, pride ourselves in our defense, because um, although if you're not, uh, defense is all about um, the heart and uh, your mindset, so um, it's a very, it's, it's controllable. So if you focus on that, uh, I think you can beat anyone. We are steeped in history and tradition, like most of the old boys schools in South Africa. Um, you know, being, Maybe from where we are, we don't have the biggest boys, so we, we do try and obviously rely on and emphasize skill and trying to play a, a more attractive brand of rugby, I suppose, similar to what your UC2 who are you know, closely linked to us, play that sort of type of rugby and are moving from their very much defensive mindset more of an attacking mindset. So obviously we'd like to play a bit of rugby, but uh, as you know, modern rugby, you also have to put an emphasis on your forward play as well. With Sachs having dominated the first half, Dale put their foot on the gas in the second to score all their points in the game. We try to run it as much as possible, but obviously we've got to set up phases and earn the right to go wide. Um, so yeah, we, we, we haven't changed much over the years. Uh, we still like to give the ball a bit of air and get all 15 players involved, yes. Our rugby is keep the ball moving all the time. We don't like uh, playing and stop, playing and stop. We always want to run the ball to the, our wingers because we, we have a fast back line, we want to use that. But it was Sachs who emerged victorious, an impressive first win for them at this festival. In between their games, the teams were able to enjoy the array of facilities on offer at Kersney College and spend some time socialising with the other teams, especially in a very cool ice bath overlooking the Burters Hill Valley. 
Okay, we encourage the players from the opening evening to uh, try and make friends with uh, boys from the other teams because you know, rugby is an amazing game that uh, you, you'll stay in contact or come into contact with each other you know, for life li literally. So the campus being out of the city and in a very uh, sort of rural environment or peri-urban environment uh, allows the boys to stay on campus. It's a beautiful campus. Uh, they'll spend most of the day, even the uh, off days, on campus and socialising with each other, which is also a big thing of, of sport and something which we like to uh, promote uh, in our sport. Great experience, meeting new friends, and I think, I think it's good for bonding as a team because you stay together as a team. You know, some, sometimes you don't get that chance staying together as a team. Yeah, you stay together. You know, you have 90% of the top SA players here in this like, little campus here and you always get to mingle with them, mix with them, eat every single meal with them. And you know, you make further provincial sides and you go there and you speak to them and you, you make bigger mates there and they actually turn out to be mates for the rest of your life. Back on the field, it was the turn of another newcomer, Pretoria's Hoer School Menlo Park, taking on local team Westville Boys High. Menlo making their presence felt within the first three minutes after a blistering pace try from centre Stian Pinar. Our culture is, uh, you know, typical Northern Transvaal or Bulls rugby uh, with our forwards and then we like to spread the ball a little wide when we've got space. Westville replying with one of their own after this clever grubber through the gap and back into the hands of Shane Ball. Westville coach Grant Bell using this festival to fine tune his team for the season ahead. Okay, obviously I think with festivals, um, the great thing is that you don't have the pressure that you might have playing a derby at home. Uh, it allows you the opportunity just to experiment a little bit, uh, look at different combinations. Um, for me, it was more about giving uh, boys some trust and confidence in the, in the positions that we've given them, looking at combinations and trying to get them to settle. Uh, we still have some, some areas of weakness that we need to fix. You know, I think the, the, the fact that there's no pressure of, of playing in front of a home crowd on a derby day, trying to get the win, yeah, you can come and, and just play. I think is, is, it gives you the ability to express yourself a little bit more. Westville winger Tony Mahlangu heeding his coach's sentiments and cutting through the defence to express himself over the try line. We learned so much. I mean, we, came, we started off with a rough season uh, from our home games. And we came here and we got to work with our combinations a bit more. We have a fairly young team, so to get those youngsters to come up and get those combinations with the senior players is really important for us. In what became a closely contested match, Westville's Craig Schlemmer successfully banging over the three points they needed to seal the win. Another Pretoria school, Afis, returning once more to the festival, up against Irgia Janssen from the East Rand. I think it's a great initiative for building it on the, for the next games following in the year. Um, it gives you the opportunity to not only build your team for the year, but to, to learn as a coach and to, to see what other teams are doing. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to play rugby. That's the most important for us. And play rugby they did in what started off as a contest of the burly forwards, with Ierger Janssen's pack bulldozing their way over the chalk in this impressive mall. Uh, we're actually lucky, a lot of matrix, um, we were a young team last year, so a lot of matrix stayed this year. Um, so a lot of seniors in the team can lead the junior guys coming in. So I think the team spirit is great, the senior guys leading the younger guys. It was, however, Afis who dominated, giving the spectators an emphatic display of why they are regarded as one of the elite rugby schools in the country, scoring seven tries in this game and relishing the opportunity to play against teams from around the country. This uh, is a great opportunity for us all. I think our school is really the land that we have come to enjoy this opportunity to play with each other and to bring our grounds a bit out. And I think the smell of different types of rugby is really the land that we have learned, what a very good thing is for all of us to be in on your grounds and your province. A school like Alfie's has got tradition. There's a lot of guys that played in the white jersey before this team. There's a lot of guys that's going to play after this team. So, so we want to focus on, on earning the jersey. The guys must earn the jersey. We don't just want to give it away because there's so much tradition in our jersey. And that's what Alfie stands for. Uh, not in, only in rugby, in general. We must, we must never lose, lose focus on, it's not about us. It's about the school and it's about the kids that, that stand behind this team. Yaku Koch will certainly be proud of the winning tradition upheld by his team taking their first game convincingly. 
The primary school curtain raises this year saw the KwaZulu-Natal Rugby Union's Development Department fielding the under-13 Ibutu Provincial Development Team, who would play against a primary school each day. In Flowerly Prep from the North Coast, Maritzburg's Pelham Primary, and Kersney's neighbours, Highbury Prep. I think because of the, uh, the opportunity that they receive here or they get here, they always expose themselves to better schools. If maybe they get the scholarship, they'll go and, 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 and play better rugby then. I'm not saying we are not uh, coaching them the good rugby, but you know, to play rugby every day, it's not like to have two or three days to make up a, a good team. You see, so they, they play here, they expose themselves here, they, they, they get some scholarship, then they'll go far and play better rugby. But first of all, let me think that the sponsor, they played a really big role in our staying here and the chance that they gave us to come here. And this festival is not just for those 15 players out there from the school. It's about coming out here, enjoying the day. The youngsters are playing ball. They're learning, looking up. These are future heroes in that of South Africa. A lot of talent out here and literally we're honoured to be a part of this sponsorship. Really, it's a fantastic initiative from Kersey and we hope it goes and keeps on growing. It's a great experience, especially for us. We weren't really on a winning streak, but our coaches had belief in us. We came here and we did it. Uh, it has been great, it's been good. Uh, most of it, I think it's created by the, the atmosphere that the boys have, have, have received around here. Seeing a lot of players, uh, Sharks players, the famous people that they've met throughout this tournament, I think it changes people's mind even them their mind and set. I think now they understand what we're talking about, the competition, what it's all about. Congrats to the team winning all three of their games. The remaining two games of day one concluded and in the final game another close contest between Grey College from Bloemfontein and Hartier S. Middleburg. Day two, another perfect day on the magnificent Kersney College campus and we pick up the action as the hosts Kersney take on Grey College. This Bloemfontein-based school has a rich rugby heritage, having produced a record 45 Springboks. The game began with resilient defence by Kersney as they held their line for 16 minutes before Gray's PR Serpentine sniped through a gap to open the account for the visitors. Yeah, I think it's 159 years of tradition that's come a long way. Um, I think uh, Grey rugby is something special. I don't think there's one thing that makes it that special, but uh, it's the it's the whole privilege of being at Grey and, and, and that Grey is a rugby school but uh, we tend to try and, and do everything uh, competitive, not just the rugby. As the game went into half time, Kersney's Cameron Ritchie up the ante for the home team to help them send winger Sebastian Power over to level the score. With a half time review for both camps, Grey went straight into the attack in the second half to increase their lead as the game progressed. Well, this is not what people can do. This is what you want to do in your ears when you come in. This is what you believe when you want to do in school. You have to be there when you're in school. In the dike, when you're in school, when you're in school, when you're in half mass. Then you can come back to what tradition is and what it means to be on the market. Now I play for the school and I play for the train. I play for the school and I play for the school. But I play for the school. This is what people can do when you're in school. And while Gray took the game 2810, both teams put on a fine display of fast-paced running rugby. Next, it was a North vs South battle. Afis vs Sacks. Obviously it was a very big one for us. Um, the boys know that Uffies are an incredible uh, rugby school and I think we're not the biggest side um, but we, we definitely have a lot of heart so the boys just um, thought that they, if they pitched up on the day um, we could give them a, a full on go. In the second half centre Kieran Dyram with a great run across the park dotting down under the post to level the scores. With the scores even, the successful conversion of that try gave Sachs a close victory over the Pretoria team. Came here. Obviously hoping to win all the games, but uh, you know, up is obviously going to be a massive challenge for us. We're very much in the you know the infancy stage of our season, having played one game. So to come here and beat up is was a you know major achievement for us. Our school's only ever played them once before, the second time in our history that we've played them, and to beat them in you know, such a big, uh, renowned rugby school was, I think none of these boys I think still can't believe something that they what they achieved. So that you know, was a monumental uh, victory for us, and uh, we're very happy and pleased with that.
a new outreach program with the support of Standard Bank, who provided seed funding, and Ilovo was introduced this year. Boots and Balls. This initiative, I think we've already got um, a substantial amount of kit, and we're certainly looking to cater for up to providing kit for 30 teams uh, around the country. Um, and I've got to just thank everybody, especially the schools that have arrived, the boys, um, the staff, and parents that have arrived um, during the, the, the Thursday and the, uh, and the Saturday today, filling the bins. Um, it's much needed kit, and as I said, the low um, levels really appreciate all these gestures, and it goes a long way. So a big thank you to the public and the schools in general. The kit that had been collected was handed over to the KZNRU's Development Department for distribution to underprivileged schools and clubs. More rugby action from day two, with Durban's Glenwood High School warming up to face Hartier S. Middleburg. Rudy Damas is their head coach. We've got a young side this year. I know um, it's not always the best thing, but we've got a young side, uh, but a very talented side, and boys that likes to, like, like to play rugby. Well, obviously, uh, at Glenwood, our policy is um, uh, playing for the team. It's, uh, it's always for the, the team performance, and we, we do want to compete at the, at the highest level, so that's what we, we're pushing at the moment. The green machines forwards pushing over the line and onto the scoreboard. Just not enough to get the win, however. Saturday's final game saw Framesby facing Ierger Janssen. Framesby's head coach keen to use this festival as a final prep for their season. Um, look, it's a um, great privilege and honour to be here. Um, this is our third time at the festival. Um, for us, coming from Port Elizabeth um, in the Eastern Province, we don't get a lot of opportunity to play against, against some of the best schools in the country. Um, and obviously at this festival, um, you get the opportunity to play against the best and uh, test yourself against the best. It's a great opportunity for our boys as well to test themselves in terms of their skill level. And also it's nice for, for team building and um, see what you got for the season eight when you go home. Here Janssen, however, proving why they are one of the best rugby schools in SA. With their back line firing on all cylinders and a big 31-6 win over their PE opponents. A festival such as this is simply not possible without the support of sponsors. Kersney is proud to present this festival in association with Standard Bank. I think it's really good to see that it's not all about who the winner is, and it's good to see the, that it's a, a theme of festival rugby across all the festivals that we sponsor. The festival rugby is amazing because the boys do tend to throw the ball around, they prepare to run a bit, they prepare to do a whole lot of things that, that if, if the score was tied, they wouldn't do that you know, if it wasn't a festival of rugby. So we very much support the festival of rugby. There's a lot of competition and a lot of pressure on the players already. And we, we, that's why we encourage the festival of rugby. Day two's results with some surprises and a fantastic win for Sachs over Uffies. The weather so far had played ball, and although slightly overcast and breezy on day three, the crowds were geared up and ready for the final day of top schools rugby. The first game had the crowd on the edge of their seats, Westville taking on Sachs, who had been impressive so far. Throughout the game, the lead ping-ponged between the two schools, Westville hoping to make it two out of three, and Sachs aiming for a clean sweep. Both teams played their hearts out, the 30 players on the field displaying some fine rugby. Much to the delight of the crowd though, Westville pulling off a great win. In the beginning of the season we struggled a lot, we couldn't find our team chemistry, we were struggling to be able to bond together as a team, but a few exercises here at the, at the hostel we're staying in made us um, come back together and this win meant a lot to us. We played very well, we tried to be united in playing in Sachs and we came to see it. A delighted Westville boys high making it two out of three and Sachs going away with their heads held high. A wonderful debut with some thrilling schoolboy rugby on display. Hartier S. Middleburg up against an unbeaten Selborne College. 
Oh, this, this festival is great for learning your players' game because you never know what you're going to get from these guys. And uh, Selborne, they're the on-form team at this moment and we've got a, a, a big game today. We, we're fortunate to, to have three big games and we did quite well and to finish it off today will be, if we can get a W here today, it will be, it will be excellent. This was another tightly contested match with both teams trading the lead until the second half when a well-timed punt from Middleburg and excellent ball handling from Waldo Conradi set up the five-pointer. Pa Bailey added the conversion and earned the Heifel team a well-earned victory. Menlo Park making their first appearance at the festival up against Glenwood in their final match. A bittersweet encounter for one Menlo Park player who used to play for the Green Machine, Ruhan Stroyli, the son of Rudolf. We've got a quite a young team as well, and actually we have Ruan in the team also. His dad is also old boy of Menlo Park, and when he, when he got the position of the CEO at the Golden Lions, he stayed in Pretoria and he, he, he put his son into his, his old school. I think there's quite a lot of pressure, but um, you know, with the years growing up, I've gone used to it and it doesn't really mind. I don't really pay attention to it anymore, but I just try to go out and play the best game that I can for my team and for my school. This was another close contest that would have the large crowd enthralled. The scores were close and Glenwood in a late onslaught just not enough. And Menlo finishing 23-19 to the good. The final match of the day saw Kersney up against Dale College. Personally, Kersney had a, had, a, had a tough road. We had some, some big teams we played against and we disappointed with the losses, but it's a, a very good experience for the guys. I think it will help us a lot in our domestic season that lies ahead. Um, some brilliant schools here. A lot of the games you can't really predict beforehand who's going who's gonna to win it. I think it's a good way to, um, to see where you are and see where your team is at and see exactly just how good you are. I mean, that's the only way to measure yourself is to play the best in the country, you play the best side you can play. And you can see individually as well as this uh, team uh, where you are in the country. As a Kersney College captain, um, I'd like, just like to thank every single other school that's come out to, to Kersney College and come and played in our festival. I mean, it's such a privilege to have every single one of you guys here and even to play against you and get to know you. It's a great privilege to have you, so thank you so much for coming. Great words from the host captain to round off a fantastic day of rugby. With some rugby legends in attendance, on hand to witness the future legends receiving the much sought after Sharks Academy bursaries. In this country, South Africa, we're particularly blessed with talented young footballers. And the idea behind giving five instead of uh, what we had planned three was basically down to the superb array of talents in charge. Uh, obviously it means a lot, I mean, we are working really hard off the season and to get this is just a chair on the top and this person really means a lot and to kiss up my future as a rugby player. What is particularly pleasing is the amount of local talent that we see on an annual basis. Because uh, Natal schools rugby is certainly in a healthy state. Oh, it's been absolutely brilliant, you know, we've we had the crowds, we've had the weather, we've had the teams, we've had the games. It's been unbelievable to our sponsors, we couldn't have done it without them. To the teams themselves, they've played rugby out of their boots. It's been absolutely wild and we've really enjoyed having everyone, hosting them here on our beautiful campus and we just want to say thank you to everyone who came. 
We're already lining up our teams for next year and I can assure everyone that uh, the teams next year will be outstanding again. So we're focusing on that family atmosphere. Bring your children along, come down from all over the country, come here on the weekend. You will have the most awesome, amazing time. So join us uh, in Easter 2016. We love it, the players love it. Uh, everybody loves it, it's a good vibe at the festival with coaches, managers, whatever there is, uh, players. So as I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a festival that the boys enjoy, which is the main thing. The rugby is good and the atmosphere is great. So we'll definitely sign up next year. Just a big thank you to all the teams for attending. Um, fantastic to have you here. Look forward to next year and hopefully we see you all back again. Another great year of schools rugby at its best. Look forward to seeing you again next year.